Mm. Paul Silva here. But you knew that because that's where you're at. <laughs> Hope you're doing okay, guys. It's uh, We're in some interesting times. Um, if you can hear me, just let me know that you can hear me. Um, and if you're on replay, just hashtag replay. Um, glad you're here. Um, <clears throat> pardon me if I'm doing that coughing thing. I'm okay. It's not like coughing, coughing. It's like irritated. <laughs> Relax. As I said, we're in interesting times. And, you know, things have changed, but at the same time, they haven't. You know, we're still, we're still here. Um, so our Q&A, a weekly Q&A, and um, I have one question today. So it's going to be a short one, um, but I did want to talk a little bit about kind of what's going on. You've heard a million things. You know, there's a, there's a fine line between being informed and overwhelmed, and this not to overwhelm anyone. Um, I'll get to that in a second because I just want to get to the question. And uh, then I'll talk a little bit about sort of what the atmosphere is, what's the, you know, what's the barometric pressure uh, happening out there. So let's get to the first question or the only question <laughs> this week. Uh, um, I guess everyone's a little occupied. Uh, one, and this actually relates. I wanted to know your thoughts on the difference between drinking to relax during this pandemic time now and having a problem with drinking. We hear about how we should take care of ourselves and doing things like exercising and yoga, which I do, but why should we, you know, why should we not be having a glass of wine to help us relax during this stressful time? What's the difference between the wine and other relaxing stuff? So that is a cool question. I like that one. Um, so what I gather, what I'm getting from that is that, you know, what's the difference between, you know, we're talking about self-care, right? Like everyone should be taking care of themselves during this time, anytime really, but even more so now. Um, but what's the difference between that and having a glass of wine? What's the difference between going to Pilates or reading a book, something that can make us feel good and that glass of wine. Now it's true. I mean, wine can make us feel relaxed or, you know, beer or name your spirit there. Um, it releases, you know, the dopamine and the serotonin, the endorphins. It makes us feel good. It, it gives us, it makes us feel relaxed. Absolutely. Um, and obviously as you have more, it starts to affect your, your body a little bit different. Inhibitions go down, judgment, all that. Um, now the same thing can be said, let's say about running. I love running. So I'll get an endorphin rush sometimes with the running. Um, or doing something pleasurable, something that I enjoy, I'll get that kind of brush. But uh, the difference though, and yes, they, they could be tapping into the same parts of the brain that give us those chemical releases. The difference is though that wine or alcohol, I keep saying wine because that was the, the, the question. The difference is that um, the alcohol, um, although it does get, it taps into uh, the brain with the, the chemicals, it also interacts with the body in a lot of different ways, right? It's not just the feel good chemicals. It, it messes with the hormones. It messes with all sorts of um, the systems, the adrenal system, everything in our body, it affects. And so something like cortisol, which as we know is the stress hormone, we have a glass of wine to relax, but actually it does interfere with cortisol, actually increases the level of cortisol in some ways. And so what happens is it, it resets the body's kind of thermostat and it increases it. And so even though we get that, that hit of those feel good chemicals, as we habitually start to have the wine or, or whatever it is, um, our threshold is changing. And so now after a while, we, we have to have more to get the same effect, unlike something like yoga or any of that, where uh, you get that, that, that feel good from a workout or something like that. And then that's it because nothing else is really getting chemically or horm you know, hormone wise is not getting affected the same way that alcohol affects our body. And so, yes, having that glass of wine is great. You can have it and relax and enjoy, but it is altering after time. It does change things. So our habits around the alcohol change. So I don't know if that makes sense. You can absolutely, you know, I never have ever once said that, you know, you can't have a glass of wine to relax. I think it's the intention behind the glass of wine or, or bottle of beer. But overall, 
it does change our body and our body adapts. Our bodies are amazing and it does adapt. So I hope that answers your question. You know, doing all those things like yoga and running or whatever it is, uh, those are great, but they don't affect, they don't adjust and alter our body the same way. Like we get addicted, we can, or at least our body gets used to having a certain amount of alcohol, our brain certain gets used to it, and that will change our habits. Whereas yoga and all that may not get there. So I hope that that help, happens or helps your question. Um, I can't speak right now. <laughs> What's wrong with me? I just want to welcome Christina and Rose and Yancy and Leah. Leah, how are you? Nice to see you here. Um, so that was my one question, but I did want to talk about, and if anyone has a question, I mean, pop it in here. Um, what I did want to talk about is what's happening. And, uh, you know, I did a podcast uh, just the other day on sobriety and drinking and uh, the C-19. And I'll put the link in the comments after, but I'll give you a few highlights <clears throat> because this does affect how we look at um, drinking. It can for some of us. Um, Why well, I talked about cortisol and stress. So some people may find themselves drinking maybe out of boredom because now we're all kind of cooped in our homes. Uh, some people may find themselves drinking more because of stress. Uh, they may find themselves drinking uh, just out of habit or maybe because that's just kind of what's around, right? Just for some people might be donuts. Not that I'm eating more donuts. <laughs> maybe, I don't know. Um, but there is a possibility of how this can affect uh, our habits in general, and that includes alcohol. I think most people can recognize when they're starting to have that uptick and some people may not recognize it till later. Uh, but really what it comes down to, guys, is our, our mental, emotional, spiritual, and physical hygiene. And that's what I talk about in the podcast. So this is in the podcast. You don't have to necessarily, it doesn't necessarily even have to do with sobriety or drinking. It's just that's kind of the lens I was looking through it. But a lot of what I talk about can be applied to anyone. And especially in this time when we're kind of doubting or we're just seeing things in a, in a different way, keeping that energy and keeping ourselves intact uh, energetically uh, can be a challenge for some. And one easy way to blow that off is drinking. So I just wanted to kind of go over just like the, you know, greatest hits of what I talked about. And again, this can apply to anyone during this time. Um, mental hygiene, limit your media time. And these are things you probably heard, but uh, I've added a few. Limit your media time for sure. Again, there's a difference between inf information and overwhelm. Um, you know, take time to check uh, you know, maybe twice a day, get informed and move on because it's so easy to get caught up in all that. Um, continue to do whatever routines you have, like for morning. Personally, myself, I, I have to almost double up on my morning routine and that's meditation, gratitude, uh, prayer, studying, journaling, all that. I'm finding I am have to, to kind of counteract how I'm feeling. Uh, I have to double up on that. Um, set an intention for your day. That can be another thing. Um, you know, it's almost like a mantra. What do you want to ensure? What do you want to ensure for the day? And set that at the beginning of your day, and you can always return to that. And another thing is staying in the present. Um, you know, don't let rumination, it's like dirty feet walking in your mind. Stay in the present. What can you do? Stay grounded, you know, into your senses, what's, what's happening around you. Um, emotionally, um, you know, check your distance, I guess. You know, what I meant by that is, are you isolating because of what they're saying with the, you know, making sure that we're safe distance or, or sorry, are we separating from ourselves or are we isolating? And so isolation and, and drinking definitely uh, go together. So just check the intention behind there, you know, stay connected. So even doing something like this or talking to someone, Zoom has been having <laughs> a heyday, uh, did a webinar the other day and it took like almost 48 hours to get the recording. Zoom is just getting hammered but it's great we're staying connected i know people who are in recovery doing meetings people have never used zoom in their life or you know something similar like that who are really getting connected so we can stay connected in so many ways family reunions i've been seeing uh, people doing on zoom um and accept your emotions too so this is not about plastering a smile and fake it till you make it this is really about acknowledging and feeling it you know and and working through that and just saying yeah it, I am going to feel times or I'm going to feel overwhelmed. I'm going to feel a bit sad. I'm going to feel, but don't let those feelings fester. You know, um, you know, how can you honor your feelings without them um, overtaking you in that way? Um, physically, you know, moving your body. And I know gyms are being closed and all that kind of stuff, but there's a lot of trainers that I know that are doing online. 
So you can do stuff at home. You can do yoga. You, you know, you can still go for a run. I run. I'll go today. Um, and you know, that's a solo, uh, thing, but there's, there's ways that we can move our body, even if it's stretching in the morning or something like that. Another one is just breathing deep, meaningful, mindful breaths. And that, that can just really take away some of the, the, the harsh that, that sometimes may, we may be feeling right now is just really getting into ourselves, into our breath and, and feeling that another one is, um, uh, like, you know, what we've been telling about, you know, following directions, washing your hands, doing all that. I've, I don't know about you, but I've noticed that uh, since this whole thing came out, I touch my face a lot. <laughs> like, I don't know. And then that, now that I know that, I'm like touching it even more. So I'm trying not to. But even physically, like just, just uh, doing that. Um, all right, we're going to take a break. Angela's here. Rosalind Morgan. Hi, Morgan. Uh, Yancey says, definitely a time for sobriety. A clear and focused mind is necessary right now. Yes. Uh, Gina's here. Uh, Morgan, hi. I see that. Serge. Serge is here. Serge, I know uh, for some time now in a different life. <laughs> nice to see you, buddy. Uh, Jennifer's here. Um, oh, Serge is there. Look at that. He says, uh, uh, hey, Paul, hope staying healthy and safe during these crazy times. Yes, I hope you are too. I know you've got a little bit of a break. Uh, from where you're at. So it's nice seeing you here, bud. Um, so I just wanted to go just quickly through the rest and then uh, I'll let you go on your, your day, guys. So thank you for being here. Um, spiritually, socially, I guess. Uh, I put those together because I I put spirit, you know, uh, service is, is a form of spirit. Um, first to check in with yourself. Um, you know, how are you feeling? How are you, what do you need to do for yourself to get yourself centered? You know, how are you feeling? Uh, practice gratitude. This is something I talk all the time. Almost all my clients, I, I, I throw that at them in the first or second session, talking about gratitude. And especially in these times when it's easy to get overwhelmed with negativity and kind of low vibration energy, uh, coming from gratitude regularly, I set my tone with gratitude in the morning so that when stuff does come at me or I allow it to come at me, I can see it through a different lens. I can see it through um, more positive way seeing seeing the good um, quote unquote good um in that and being of service and we're seeing that so much now we're seeing all sorts of amazing um you know i want i don't want to say random acts of kindness but so much kindness out there people really helping people stepping up it's it's you know even just on the to times i go out i see people really really uh helping each other out there's a sense of just that we're all in this together which is really cool and then create joy create joy what um what moments can you create for yourself, for your family, for your friends that are memorable? It doesn't have to be this massive thing. It could be small little little things. That's that's how we do it. It's small incremental pieces, portion, portions of, of joy that can really uh, help us elevate us and get through this. And all of this in terms of the drinking, you know, when we have all of this, when we're coming uh, at life in a certain way, energetically, mentally, spiritually, physically, the need and the want to have a drink goes down. And that's what recovery, for those of you who aren't in recovery, those who are thinking about recovery, those who are sober curious, that's what recovery is. It's moving from, it's not just abstaining and just like white knuckling it. It's about creating a life that it doesn't need escaping from. And, you know, we can, any of us can do this that, you know, or instead of binge eating and, you know, watching porn and or gambling or, you know, maxing out your credit cards, um, you come to a place where you're just at peace with yourself and you're okay, and you know you're okay, and you don't need all that stuff to fill in the void. Um, you know, the one thing I, I did a challenge, and I'll leave you with this. Uh, I did a challenge the the other day. Um, you know, where we see so much, we see all those you know pictures of uh, and video of empty shelves at the stores, and I thought, and I said, you know, instead of that, because when we look at that, we focus, we 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 focus on the scarcity. So I challenge you to, instead of looking at the scarcity, look at the abundance. What do we have out there? Look at the kindness. Look at the, the gratitude. Look at all that stuff that we do have. We all, we all have lots of stuff. And it doesn't have to be physical. It could be just we have the joy. We have our family. We have all these this gifts. You know, this time off could be a gift for so many of us to reprioritize our lives, to you know, let the planet heal, to let ourselves heal, to let our relationships heal, and just really looking inward and, ha and just allowing. And this is a great gift to have, is just to allow. 
And so I want to leave you with that. Just look at abundance and not the scarcity. So uh, if you have any questions, I'm going to just check quickly. Uh, Rosalind, hello, Jim. Thank you for joining. Um, yeah, Rosalind said, I've noticed that people are actually asking, how are you and actually waiting for a reply? <laughs> I don't know about you here in Ontario when we say, how are you doing? It's not even, it's not, we're not even interested. It's just like saying hello. So I, don't, I think there's other people when they say, how are you doing? They're kind of taken aback because they're taking it as a serious question, but that's what's happening. Um, Diana, how are you? Yes, it is a gift, Diana. You're a gift. All of you here are a gift, and I appreciate you being here. Um, you can leave, uh, if it's replay, guys, you can do the hashtag replay. If you have any questions, comments, please leave them in the comments. I'll get back to you uh, as soon as I can. So thank you, guys. Uh, if there's no other questions, I'm going to let you go and do your thing. And again, come from abundance, guys. All right? Ciao.